Hello everyone, this is R.S. Miller at TheEndTimeNews.org and today is December 5th, 2012. This is a special report. The Syrian crisis engulfing the region and the world. The Syrian crisis continues to escalate and threatens to engulf the entire region. The collapsing regime is alleged to be mixing and moving chemical weapons in an apparent preparation for use. Meanwhile, the U.S., NATO, and Israel prep for the unthinkable. Reports are coming in that engineers working for President Bashar al-Assad regime in Syria have begun combining the two chemical precursors needed to weaponize sarin gas, according to an American official with knowledge of the situation. International observers are alarmed by activities which seem to indicate that the Syrian government could be preparing to use its nerve agent chemical weapons stockpile on its own people. The New York Times reported on Monday that the U.S. doesn't know why Syrian military has made such a move, which began in the middle of last week and is taking place in central Syria, nor are they sure why the Assad government is transferring some weapons to different locations within the country. Physically, They've gotten to the point where they can load it up on an airplane and drop it, an unidentified official said. It's being reported that the Assad government has moved more than 500 metric tons of necessary chemicals, which once combined produce deadly sarin gas. Normally these chemicals are stored separately for safety reasons. However, last week Wired.com reported that the Syrian military began combining some of these chemicals. They didn't do it on the whole arsenal, an official said, just a modest quantity. We're not sure what's the intent. According to an article in Depkafal, Assad's chemical weapons units headed out of Damascus towards Aleppo as NATO in Brussels gave the go-ahead Tuesday night, December 4th, for the deployment of Patriot surface-to-air missiles to protect Turkey against Syrian missiles. The report goes on to say that military and intelligence sources reported that the convoys of the Syrian army's chemical weapons units headed out of Damascus under the cover of darkness and turned north up the road to Aleppo. Their destination is not yet known. Back in July, the Assad regime publicly warned that it might use chemical weapons to stop external forces from interfering in Syria's bloody civil war. The announcement sparked a panic in the intelligence services of the U.S. and its allies, which stepped up their efforts to block shipments of precursors for those weapons from entering the country. This is a more serious moment than July, the official said. During a White House press briefing on Monday, Jay Carney reiterated administration's growing concern that Bashar al-Assad may resort to the use of chemical weapons. Let me address a, a few points here. We closely monitor, and we continue to closely monitor, serious proliferation-sensitive materials and facilities. As the opposition makes strategic advances and grows in strength, the Assad regime has been unable to halt the opposition's progress through conventional means, and we are concerned that in an increasingly beleaguered regime, having found its escalation of violence through conventional means inadequate, might be considering the use of chemical weapons against the Syrian people. And as the President has said, any use or proliferation of chemical weapons by the Syrian regime would cross a red line for the United States. The Assad regime must know that the world is watching and that they will be held accountable by the United States and the international community if they use chemical weapons or fail to meet their obligations to secure them. We continue to consult actively with Syria's neighbors, our friends in the international community, and with the opposition to underscore our common concern about the security of these weapons and the Syrian government's absolute obligation to secure them. Well, I, I can't get into intel intelligence assessments. We believe they are remain in the possession of the, the Syrian regime, the Assad regime. Uh, uh, but uh, as the regime has lost all legitimacy to lead Syria and the opposition grows in strength, our concern about the regime's intentions regarding its chemical weapons uh, stockpiles has increased. Well, I think the President made clear that the use of weapons was a red line. We are monitoring the situation in Syria closely and we are monitoring uh, the regime's 
chemical weapons stockpiles. I'm not going to get into intelligence matters, but as I said, we believe that with uh, the regime's grip on power loosening, with its failure to uh, put down the opposition through conventional means, we uh, have an increased concern uh, about the possibility of the regime taking the desperate act of using its chemical weapons. President Assad has become an increasingly desperate and dangerous man. The fast approaching and inevitable collapse of his regime leaves him with his back up against the wall and no way out. It is very likely that Assad sees his own demise in the not too distant future. His mind filled with nightmarish visions of the fall of Iraq's Saddam Hussein and Libya's Muammar Gaddafi leaving him with little optimism. With this in mind, he may well think that it is better to go out in a blaze of glory than to succumb to the, a certain and horrible death at the hands of the opposition. According to an Israeli national news report, Israel asked Jordan for the okay to bomb Syria's weapons of mass destruction. Israel has consulted with Jordan twice over the issue of Syria's chemical weapons arsenal according to a report published Monday by The Atlantic, both times with plans to take out multiple sites. According to intelligence officials in two countries quoted by correspondent Jeff Goldberg, Israel has been seeking Jordan's permission to bomb these sites, but the Jordanians have so far declined to agree. Indicating just how dangerous and destabilized the situation in Syria has become, the United Nations will suspend its mission within the country until further notice. They say that about 25% of the 100-member international staff in Damascus could leave this week, and some staff could be moved out of the besieged northern city of Aleppo, which coincidentally is uh, where Depkafal reports the chemical units of the Syrian regime are headed for. The United Nations is also worried about the mounting intensity of the 20-month-old conflict between Bashar al-Assad's forces and opposition rebels. The move comes after UN workers were targeted in recent attacks and after the United States warned Assad earlier Monday against any bid to unleash chemical weapons on the Syrian people. Two UN convoys en route to uh, Damascus airport were hit by gunfire last week. Uh, four Australian military observers from a UN force in the Golan Heights demilitarized zone between Syria and Israel were wounded in the attacks. During a meeting of foreign affairs ministers, NATO Secretary General Anders Fogh Rasmussen made his thoughts perfectly clear. As you know, um, the situation on NATO's southeastern border is of great concern. Turkey has asked for alliance support and we stand in full solidarity with Turkey. I would expect NATO allies to make a decision later today. I'm confident we will demonstrate our determination to deter against any threats and defend our ally because this is what our alliance is all about. Yes, I would expect um, the Council of Ministers uh, to uh, take uh, the decision this afternoon to enhance Turkey's air defenses uh, with the aim to ensure effective defense and protection uh, of the Turkish population and Turkish uh, territory. After that, it's for individual allies uh, who are capable to deploy um, Patriot missiles uh, to take their decisions uh, in full respect for domestic parliamentary uh, procedures. But I would expect uh, Germany, the Netherlands and the United States to be able to uh, deploy Patriot missiles uh, in uh, Turkey. Once the political decision has been made, uh, it will be followed by um, practical uh, deployment, when that exactly will happen will depend on a number of uh, practical um, issues that will be sorted out in the very near future. 
So I can't give you an exact date, but I will tell you that uh, the actual deployment of missiles will take place within weeks. The Syrian stockpiles uh, of chemical um, weapons are a matter of uh, great uh, concerns. Uh, we know uh, that uh, Syria possesses uh, missiles. We know they have the chemical uh, weapons. And of course, that also have to be included uh, in our calculations. Uh, and this is also the reason why it is a matter of urgency uh, to ensure uh, effective defense and protection uh, of our ally, um, uh, Turkey. Let me add to this that the possible use of chemical weapons would be completely unacceptable for the whole international community. And if anybody resorts to these terrible uh, weapons, uh, I would expect an immediate reaction uh, from the international community. The NATO foreign ministers voted to approve Ankara's requests for the Patriot missiles to be deployed on the Turkey-Syria border. Turkish officials also acknowledged that 300 to 400 foreign troops would also be deployed in order to operate the Patriot missiles. Russia voiced their concern when Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov said that while Russia recognized Turkey's rights to ask NATO for help, Moscow was concerned that the conflict is becoming increasingly militarized. Earlier this year, Russian officials had stated that an attack on Syria or an attack on Iran would be considered an attack on Russia. However, at this stage in the game, it seems as though options are rapidly fading. On the Syrian-Israeli front, UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon said that the Syrian government is violating the 1974 disengagement agreement with Israel. Syria is deploying military equipment and troops over the ceasefire line on the Golan Heights, Ban said in a report delivered Monday to the Security Council, and the violations could escalate Israel-Syria tensions and jeopardize the agreement. I am concerned that the presence of armed members of the opposition and the ongoing military activities of the Syrian security forces have the potential to ignite a larger conflict between Israel and the Syrian Arab Republic with grave consequences. There should be no military activity of any kind in this area, he said. Meanwhile, the Syrian civil war continues to spill across borders of neighboring countries. It's being reported that on Wednesday, December the 4th, a battle broke out in the northern Lebanese city of Tripoli between gunmen of opposing sides in the Syrian conflict. The fighting went on for two days, killing at least five people and wounding 45 others. The Lebanese army fanned out in the city of Tripoli to calm the fighting, with soldiers patrolling the streets and armored personnel carriers and manning checkpoints. Authorities closed major roads because of sniper fire. This is not the first time that the Syrian conflict has spilled across borders in the past 20 months. There were also incidents in Turkey, Israel, and Jordan. By some estimates, the fighting in Syria has claimed as many as 50,000 lives, including women and children. The inevitable fall of the Assad regime leaves his arsenal of chemical weapons either unsecured or worse yet, in the hands of the opposition, a significant portion of whom are anti-American, anti-Israel. One can only imagine what they would do with those weapons. If ever there was a time for outside military intervention, then this is it. I personally believe that unless a miracle takes place in the next few weeks, we are going to see some sort of military action by the world community. And where it goes from there, well, we just will have to wait and see. Ladies and gentlemen, friends, anyone who observes can clearly see that we are living in troubled times. But these are not just another chapter of troubling times in the book of human history. Instead, they are the fulfillment of Bible prophecy, the final chapters, and the last days. These are the days that we are told to be alert and to keep watch, for we do not know the hour our Lord will return. 
But what I'm talking about is not the second coming of Christ when Jesus places his foot upon the Mount of Olives. I'm talking about when he comes in the clouds, the rapture. I am a firm believer in the pre-tribulation rapture. Although that doesn't mean that Christians will escape all persecution and all tribulation, because those things have been going on since the time of Jesus, and they will continue to go on until God sets up his kingdom on earth. But what it does mean is that we Christians shall escape the worst of the tribulation. I know that some folks believe that we are to go through the great tribulation period almost as if it were a badge of honor of some sort. This is not the case. Nowhere in the Bible does it state or imply that we must go through the great tribulation in order to be saved. We are saved by grace and not by works or anything that we ourselves are capable of achieving. It does say that because Jesus himself was persecuted, that we too would also share in that persecution and have tribulation. For it is with much tribulation that we enter into the kingdom. But this is not the great tribulation. However, be that as it may, I don't intend to argue the point. Instead, I would just like to offer a bit of scriptural encouragement to those who believe in the pre-trib rapture and perhaps shed a little light on the subject for those who don't. There are some that say the word rapture doesn't even appear in the Bible, so therefore it must be false teaching. Well, actually, the English word rapture was derived from the Latin verb repair, and if I'm pronouncing that correctly, it's spelled R-A-P-E-R-E, -E, which means to carry off or to catch away. This Latin verb can, in fact, be found in the Latin Vulgate, which is a 4th century Latin version of the Bible, which precedes our current versions. In 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 through 3, it says, We beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and in that we shall assemble unto him, that ye be not suddenly moved from your mind, and not be troubled, neither by spirit, neither by words, nor yet by letter, which should seem to come from us as though the day of Christ were already at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for the Lord cometh not except there comes a departing first, and the sinful man be opened, the son of perdition. In essence, what it's saying is that that day of the Lord does not come until there's first a departing. And the man of sin will be revealed who is the son of perdition. Now, this reference comes from the Tyndale Bible, which was printed in 1526. And it uses the word departing as opposed to falling away. Now, in 1 Thessalonians about verses 5, 1 through, let's see, I'm going to read 1 and 2, and then go, 1, 2, 3, and then go to 9. Uh, it says, Of the times and seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For ye yourselves know perfectly that that day of the Lord shall come even as a thief in the night. When they say peace and safety, excuse me, this one reads peace and danger, then cometh on them sudden destruction, as the travail of a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Verse 9 says, well, I'm going to come back to verse 9. Let me go back over verse 1 through 3. Who is he talking here to here? He's speaking to two different groups. The first group is brethren. That's the brothers and sisters in Christ. Of the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord shall come even as a thief in the night. Then he speaks to the other group. When they, that's the second group, 
shall say peace and no danger. Then cometh on them, the second group, not us or we, sudden destruction. And they, not us or we, shall not escape. Then you read in verse 9, For God has not appointed us, not they or them, unto wrath, but to obtain health by the means of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'll do that again. For God has not appointed us unto wrath, but unto health by the means of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now in Luke 21, 36, this is one that I really like a lot too. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. That was so good I'll read it again and I'll put it into English. Watch you therefore and pray always that you are counted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man who is Jesus Christ. This is Luke chapter 21 verse 36 and for those of you who may not be aware those are the signs of the end times. All of those things, the earthquakes, the famines, the wars and the pestilences, all of those things are coming up. It doesn't say that you know you are going to go through these things. It doesn't say pray that you are able to you know endure these things, but to escape these things. We are living in the last days and time is getting short. The rapture is about to take place. Are you saved? Follow the link below and pray the prayer of salvation with a sincere heart and you will be saved. It is my prayer that God bless each and every one of you with ears to hear, eyes to see, and a heart to receive. In Jesus' name, amen.